Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. This video is going to be part one in a little series where I'm going to hook up a heat map. If you watched the last video I tried to set up, or the last couple videos, I tried to set up an electronics workstation in the garage, but it was pretty cold, and so I was going to put a little heat map in there, or heat mat in there on the floor, so when I stood I got some heat. Well, I've decided to move the electronic stuff into my basement, and I still have the same problem. It's still cooler down here, but it's a little quieter, and I think it'll make for better videos. I'm going to go over the Nexion portion first. For the Nexion, I'm, it's just going to be a one-page display for now. I'll probably add to it as I put in some control later. Um, for right now, I have this X0, which is a float. But as you know, the Nexion doesn't really support floats. It's just going to be an integer. But I have the VVS1 set to 2. If I could change that to 3, then I have three decimal places. But for right now, I'm going to leave it at 2. And then I have this VVS0, which is in front of the decimal plate, which I can make 3 here to show you. Now we've got three decimal places in front. But if you define both of them, it takes the three digits from the far left and puts them on that side and it takes the two digits from the right and puts it on that side and it can get kind of confusing. So I'm going to leave this at zero. So we're going to have two decimal places and then whatever else it will be on the left. It'll auto adjust this side over here. And then I also have this picture down here. And if you go over to this side over here I have two pictures. I have a green light and I have a red light. And so when the, heat, when the heat mat is on, I'm going to have it be red, and when the heat map is off, it's going to be green. And that'll be just a little visual indicator on the Nexion display. And you set that by this pick value right here. If I change it to a 1, changes it to that red image, and if I leave it a 0, it's the green image. And we'll start it at green. You can start it wherever because the Arduino will send the value that it needs. And that's really all there is to the Nexion. The Nexion isn't going to send anything. It's just going to receive. So it's just going to act as a display. There'll be no control until probably the next video. And for the schematic, or for the actual hardware, I'm going to use this GeekFun DS18B12 as my uh, temperature sensor. And it comes, I couldn't find it in the Fritzig library. But there should be a board in between the sensor and the wires that go back to the Arduino. I'm going to use pin 5, digital in 5, to read the temperature value. And then we'll need a black and red for ground and VCC to it. For the display portion, I'm using the, a low-end Nexion. But I'm going to use D2 and D3. I'm going to set a software serial on the Nano so I have a, a second serial port. I'm going ahead and taking the time to do that in this video because I want to be able to put data out of the serial monitor on the Arduino. This way you'll be able to see the raw data that I collect from the sensor and then differentiate it from what I send to the display. The real-time clock I'm going to use is a DS3231. I won't have that set up in this video, so the pinout might change on that. But for right now, I'm planning on using A4 and A5. Then I'm going to use uh, pin D13 to control the relay, which will control the heat map. The heat map will run on 120 volts, and the Arduino will need to have some sort of interface between. I'm going to use this relay. Now this isn't the exact relay module that I have. My input only has three inputs. It has the VCC and the ground and then the N. It doesn't have the COM and the other ground. Now I'm going to move on to the Arduino portion. Now the Arduino portion should be pretty familiar. I'm going to start with the, defining an N character, which is the 0FFs, three of them. And then I define my data from display as DFD, and I clear that out. And then I set up an asynchronous delay, and I set a variable as a counter so I can compare it to the milliseconds. And then my delay length to start with is going to be 5 seconds, or a count of 5,000. And for this video, I'm going to use a library. I'm going to use the one-wire library and the Dallas temperature library. 
like I say in my note there, sometimes it's fun to dig into technology and sometimes it's just easier to, to use a library. I'm going to declare pin 5, which I showed you in the schematic, as being the, the pin that I'll use as my bus. We have to create an instance of that one wire library, and then we have to define it, or we have to use that instance then to define the actual temperature sensor that we're going to be using. I'm going to call it temp sensor. And then we'll set up the software serial, and as I said before, I'm going to use pins 2 and 3. And the setup isn't uh, too involved right now because all we're going to be doing is reading a temperature and sending it to the display. I set the serial 2 to be the display and then I set my temp sensor to begin so I can collect the data. And then the pin mode, I don't have the heat mat hooked up yet but I do have the relay so you'll hear and see the relay flick back and forth. Now there's going to be some things in the main loop that I'm not using yet. Like at the beginning here, if serial 2 has data available, in other words, if the NextGen is sending data to the Arduino, it would collect it right here. Well, that's not going to happen because I don't have the NextGen sending anything to the Arduino. At this point, I just have the Arduino sending data to the NextGen. And we're going to do that in the delay. So in this asynchronous delay, we're going to check the current milliseconds, and if, they, if it has gone beyond the value of the async delay, which will initially be set to zero, so this should trigger immediately, we're going to go ahead and set the async delay. We're going to add 5,000 to the asynchronous delay, essentially five seconds, so that means the millisecond won't be greater than it for another five seconds, so this won't run again for, for that time. And then we're going to request the temperature. This, is, as I said, is a library, so it's built in. We're going to request the temperatures to the temp sensor. When it does that, it collects more than just the current Fahrenheit. That's all we're going to read, but it pulls a bunch of data and stores it in the temp sensor object. Now, in that object, we're just going to fetch the degrees in Fahrenheit. So we're going to set a float, even though we know the next one can't handle a float, temp f, and we're going to read get the temp f by index, and it's zero because it's the first device we've placed on there. But I might add a second device and go into that a little bit more. But for right now, if you have one device, it's zero. And then locally, we're going to print it on the serial monitor. We'll print the word temperature, and then a space, or a colon and a space, and then we'll print that value, temp f. And it will print it out with a decimal point of two places, because we're not telling it what decimal plate to print it to, and the default in the Arduino is two decimal places. And then we're going to print those escape character, which will give us the degree symbol. That's what that backslash xc2 backslash xb0 is. And then we're just going to print the character f, so we know it's in degrees Fahrenheit. And if the temp f is greater than 78, I'm going to change this to 75 just so that we can see some um, action happening. So if the, and the temperature in the basement is a little bit cooler. If the temperature is greater than 75 degrees, that means we've heated the mat up to the point that we want to shut the, the relay off, so we're not no longer running the heater. So we're going to write the output to a low, and then we're going to serial print to the connection. But in this case, we're not controlling that temperature portion, we're controlling the picture and zero was the ID for the green picture. So we're going to set p0.pic equal to zero, and we're going to add that end character, those three FFs, and send that to the next gen. And that will set that picture. Now if the temperature is less than 77, which right now won't work, because we want it to be less than 75, so we're going to set this at 71. So if the temperature falls below 71 degrees, we want to go ahead and turn the heater back on. So we'll digitally write pin 13 to a high, which will activate the relay and turn the heater on. And we're going to send that, or we're going to change that picture on the next gen to the red circle. So that's p0.pic equals 1 and the 3 FFs. At this point, we've changed the relay to turn the actual heater on and off, and we've sent a image to the, or we've changed the image in the next gen to show red or green depending on the state. Now we need to send the value to the next gen. Now here's where we go serial to print line x0.value. Now if you're sending a string you have to 
use the escape sequence and put some quotes in there, but for the value you don't. So, but we do have to turn the integer into a value. But before we can turn the integer into a value, we have to turn the float into an integer. And so that's that temp f. We're going to multiply it by 100. So let's say it's 75.55 degrees. We're going to make it 7,555 degrees. We're going to turn that into an integer, and then we're going to turn it into a string, and then we're going to send it to the next gen, followed by those three FFs. So it'll be x0.val equals whatever the temperature F is times 100 plus the end characters. We'll also serial print that locally. This way you'll be able to see the difference between the two things that we're sending. And then finally, while well, the Nexion will send error codes up, and if the DFD ends with those N characters, we want to catch that, because that means it was sent something that's proprietary to the Nexion. But this is just, this will, this last portion catches things in the event that I'm not actually looking for them, and it will print that out. So even though we're not, we don't have the Nexion program to send anything, if by chance it did send something, the DFD collected data, it would clean it up here and we'd get a little display on our serial output that says error. So I just want to go over this real quick here before we run it. So the Nexion is going to be display only. It has no control. When the Arduino sends info to the local serial mono, it's going to send it in this format, temperature, and I use that 75.55 degree F just as an example. The Arduino is going to control the image on the Nexion with that p0.pick equals 0 or p0.pick equals 1. The Arduino is going to send fake temperatures to the Nexion. When I say fake information, I mean it's going to convert the 75.55 degrees to 7,555 degrees. Because if we were to send the decimal point, we would get an error. So it has to be in an integer format. We have the Nexion float value set to be what it, two characters will be on the right side of the decimal point. So it should work out fine. I'll go ahead and switch over to the camera and I'll try and get the serial monitor going at the same time. Okay, so here it's all set up and running. You can see that the display shows 61.36 and the temperature is 61.36. But what we're sending up to the Arduino is the second number, that's 6,552. And then, or not to the Arduino, to the Nexion. And then the Nexion takes that and, and it takes that and adjusts that to that decimal point. So it's 71 or 7205. And you can see that it's working very well. I'm going to start warming it up. And hopefully, I'll zoom over to the Arduino, and you can see it turned off. And now I will start to let it cool down. And you can see when it got below 71, it turned off. And you can see the Arduino is a little bit blurry down there. But you can see that the relay light changed and the Arduino light changed. We'll warm it back up again. And you can see that it changed again. So just to quickly review, on the next gen we have this float variable right here, or this float object. And we have the VVS set to 2 for the right side of it. And we have it set to 0 for the left side, so it auto adjusts. And then we have this image down here that just we go flip between two images over here. Image 1 is the red, and image 0 is the green. And we're not sending any data from the Nexion. And then in the Arduino, we have this asynchronous delay, so every five seconds we're going to read the temperature value, and then we're going to pull it in as a float. We're going to print it out to the serial monitor, and then we send, based upon the value that we get, we're going to change the picture that's displayed on the display, and we're going to turn on or off the relay, 
and then we're also going to convert it to an integer and send it up to the nection. Now as this series goes on, I'm going to add some feedback so that we'll get some signaling back from the nection. I'm going to try to introduce a real-time clock. It just kind of depends on whether I, whether I get around to it or not, but I, I think I will because I think it'll be interesting to have that on the display. And I'll add a second um, temperature sensor. I'm thinking I am at this point, but I'm, I'm not 100% sure either. But hopefully it gets interesting, if nothing else, for the feedback from the Nexium back to the Arduino. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up. And also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.